Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Black Magic by R. Sinclair. So this is Regina from Regina's Bookish Library. Uh, she sent me this as part of a bunch of books that I won uh, from a competition. Uh, so do check her channel out if you haven't already. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb. There's a little author bio here as well with her dog. And uh, yeah, I'm going to read you the blurb, author bio, go through, check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... R. Sinclair is an award-winning author of gothic and horror fiction. She lives in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I live in Bucks High Wycombe. Small town music legend Rob Sweeney has everything a man could wish for. Money, success, and a new beautiful woman in his life. But when a bitter ex-girlfriend isn't ready to let go, he makes an unwitting deal with a devil in the form of Lloyd Lair, a musician who lacks Rob's talent but will stop at nothing to get what he wants, including murder. So, let's check out some tabs. So we get this line near the start. The Cannibal Cocktail Lounge's bamboo booths always reminded Rob of the tiger cages in Vietnam movies. The kind used to trap American soldiers before they were tortured in a sadistic game of Russian roulette. Well, specifically, I suppose that's the reference to the deer hunter, right? Because I, I can't think of that being in multiple Vietnam movies. And then I thought this line was interesting. For a while, he juggled both women. He knew he was guilty of that classic asshole move. Tarzan not letting go of one vine till he had his grip firmly clasped on another. And I, th I know a lot of people who've done that classic dick move there. And so here we learn a little bit about Rob's band and the hit that they've had. Although obliged to play it at nearly every gig, Rob hadn't heard this recording in years, and his decades younger voice, higher than its current register, sounded alien to his ears. That so many people loved and connected with a song he wrote and recorded on a whim still confounded him. More pop than punk, Spiderweb had been a departure from Indigo's usual sound. But when a Philadelphia DJ heard it off their EP and liked it enough to play it during a local block, it soon became the station's most requested song. Before Indigo knew what hit them, MTV came calling and the video featuring the handsome lead singer, Rob Sweeney, secured the band's success. Indigo had been riding that wave ever since. And embarrassed as they were about being occasionally classified as one-hit wonders, no one in the group ever complained about the hefty royalty check they received each month. I get that listening to my old recordings as well, like your voice does just sort of change over time. And then we get a moment, I actually thought it was an error because he gets rid of his phone and then gets a new phone and he gets a message. Uh, his phone dinged from across the room, he jumped on it hoping it was Gillian. They had see that she had somehow picked up on his vibrations over the internet airwaves and was ready to make amends. And I was like, well, it's a new phone, so how does anybody have his number? Um, but it's Lloyd and Lloyd obviously has some supernatural stuff going on, so that could explain it. And they eat some uh, cheesesteak and beer and someone says, fuck veganism, this is the shit right here. No, don't fuck veganism, vegan power, mate. And then we get this weird thing as well, it did confuse me a little bit because basically uh, Indigo plays a gig and then at the end they introduce Lloyd Lair as like an exciting new talent who's coming on tour with us. And I thought it was weird because normally you would have the support acts going on before the main band, but um, he actually plays a song with the band, with Indigo, uh, and that kind of plays into the storyline a little bit more later. So it does make more sense that as like a little encore they would do a song with Lloyd, so I'm, I'm okay, I'm happy with that. And we get a reference to Abby Hoffman having lived upstairs where there's this like weird shop called uh, Esoterica, selling left wing ephemera. And uh, Abby Hoffman was a really interesting guy. He was played by Sasha Baron Cohen in uh, The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Uh, really interesting, like, it's like a drama based on true historical events, I guess. Um, and something I didn't know too much about until I watched that, so would recommend watching that. So overall, Black Magic by R. Sinclair. So what's cool about this is this is like no frills indie horror. It, it has no pretensions. Uh, it doesn't disappear up, up its own arse, as some indie horror has a tendency to do. Uh, well written, but also not like over the top. And uh, it just does some fun things with the whole like deal with the devil trope, which obviously has been done before. Um, but Regina doesn't like act as though it's her own idea, you know, she just puts her own little spin on it, which I think was, was pretty interesting. She mentioned, I think, in the note that she sent to me with these books that like, oh, it could maybe do with a bit more editing, but I didn't really notice anything. There were like one or two very minor errors, like we're talking an extra space and things like that. But um, overall, I was very impressed. I gave this a four out of five and would recommend it. So there we have it, that's what I made of Black Magic by Regina Sinclair. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.